So, uh, Yerun, uh, you achieved a lot in your chess career, uh, but you know the way in which I know you is uh, from the game that I studied once in Rook End Game against uh, Gary Kasparov. Uh, <laughs> okay. Do you do you recollect that game? Uh, the, yeah, I was afraid you were going to ask me a difficult question, but uh, my games with Kasparov I remember. Yeah, <laughs> especially ones which ended well, which were not so many, of course, but. Uh, Yes, this one I remember. Yeah. It's become like a study-like sort of, or you can say a theoretical position now to win four versus three end games. Yeah, well, it was a, it was actually one of the first internet games. Eh? It's hard to imagine now. I think it was in 2000 or something. Yes, uh, and it was a 60-minute game. Yes, it was a, like a rapid kind of style, but it was for one of the online first online events, I think. And at the time, even the internet connection was quite complicated. And that's hard to imagine now with all the developments. But indeed, it was a, yeah, for me, it was an interesting game and match to play against him. And yeah, it, I was a bit lucky. I mean, it was the opportunity to move, you know, uh, it was a sort of time scramble and I could uh, move up my king and suddenly a, a typical draw ending and went into complicated for, for him with a pawn down. And then, yeah, I won, yeah. Yeah, and, and you've uh, achieved a lot in your chess career, uh, you've been one of the best in the world also, uh, the best uh, Dutch player. Uh, what would you say would be one of your best performance, I, I'm sure maybe from the year 94 or so on? Yeah, well it's a long time ago. I, I, I look back with many happy memories from my chess career because it was very nice as a, when you leave school that you have a passion and that you can do something. Uh, uh, which you're good at and which you like. So actually, I, I really li enjoyed my time as a chess grandmaster. And yeah, probably in 94 I won Dortmund, and in 97 also I played quite good in Weikensee and in Aras. So I think in those years I was probably playing my best chess or something. But yeah, uh, I, I, have, I have many fond memories, both of the chess players in the chess world, but also of uh, yeah, always the tournaments you perform best, you're most happy about. But it doesn't always mean you played the best. But uh, and it is, it's a long time ago. Yeah, I quit already in uh, 2002, 2003. That's already 20 years. So uh, I just follow chess a little bit from internet. And well, when I see my friends here from the past, so Vichy Anand or something, and we have dinner and with Luboyevich, so that's very nice. But uh, yes. it's more a memory, you know. It's, uh, it's a fond memory. Yeah. yeah, I got to know from Vichy that you both went out on one of the days. Uh... Yes, always. When he comes to Weikensee for Tata Steel, he, when he comes early, we meet, we have dinner at my place, or we go in Amsterdam and I visit him in Weikensee, or, uh, well, now with this event, uh, we, we sometimes have dinner and then it's good to catch up. Uh, it's nice because he's my generation. Same think, year, actually. Yes, he, he, yeah, he's 12 months or 11 months younger, but uh, yeah, I think we met for the first time in the World Championship Under-16 in Paris when we were 14 or something, So and now we're 40 years later, so we still remember each other somehow. Yeah. And then uh, what about him, do you, uh, you know, you've been following him for many years. Yeah. What, what made him so special according well, to Well, his, his talent was uh, from the start, of course, and also I think in the, when we first met him, uh, we were all, uh, you know, at a, at a sort of similar level when we were young. But already, I think with the World Under 20, he won already in the Philippines. Eh? He was so strong, he was getting quickly very strong player and uh, I think for my generation him and Ivan Chuk were the, the most talented I guess uh, they were very impressive but the way he well, his career is beautiful of course and also how long he maintained his level yes. huh? and, and now what he does for India chess and then also with the FIDE the vice president well, I guess he has a beautiful career and he's a good example for uh, for, chess, for all chess players I think and uh, he's a good friend and he's very sympathetic so and, and uh, if I may ask, like your career, what would you say stopped you from becoming like the best in the world? Uh, was it that that generation was very strong at that point? For sure, there were many. Well, there were probably players who were even better than me, or better, maybe talented, or working harder. Or it's it's for every generation. I don't know. It's always difficult to analyze yourself a little bit. Maybe you, yeah, you always do things different. Maybe when you look back and you're older, more experienced could have changed a little bit, but I don't know. I also had a, you know, in the, it also depends where you're born. Eh? We had many good tournaments, many trainings here, but it's also the life is different here. There are more 
important things next to chess. You know, uh, the family life, other things in Holland are important. It's not, uh, you know, you don't have a tunnel vision. And I was always interested in more things. So when I was 33, I had the opportunity to, you know, to become uh, uh, well, part of a family business and a, and a family office world for finance. And that was also interesting for me. So I, I changed my career and I'm also happy with that. So, uh, I mean, I, I just look back and I'm very happy and and unfortunate that I could have multiple careers in, in different sectors and to know more about life. But chess is, has been a beautiful part of it. So. Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting what you said that, you know, the place from where you are and the kind of opportunities you have mold your chess career. Generally, it's said if you have uh, more opportunities, it's good. But sometimes it can turn the other way around. Yeah, like when there are more things to do, achieve or you are very smart at something, it kind of becomes a little distraction from from chess. Yes, but I also think if you get the opportunity, I was lucky to get an offer that I could do something else in, in, than chess, then you start thinking about it. I think it goes for many sports, eh? not only for chess. The moment people start thinking about retiring or doing something else, then already it means they're doubting something in the back of their head, maybe about their career or something. And even in the chess world, I think there are, you see many former chess grandmasters, not only the ones who stay training or something, but they do other careers, or they are happy without chess, or chess in a different way. And it's a beautiful hobby, yeah? even my, well, my father still watches online and everything, and he's 83, so that wow. means people can do it. it, it keeps them fit and young, and well, chess is beautiful for many people, not only for the professionals. So. Well, you could say that in some ways you have a small role to play in this event happening because when you started working with uh, Zoop Van uh, Oosterum, yes, yes uh, Mr. He, Van Oosterum, yes. yeah, Van Oosterum, he was the ma man behind uh, Melody Amber tournament and exactly. I got to know that it was named after his daughter, I, I was not aware yes, of it yes, exactly. and I am sure you played a role in that because you worked with him. Well, it was all, in the beginning I played the tournament, ah, so, so I was still a chess player, so indeed he was a very chess fanatic, he was a player himself, and he organized many tournaments, also with Polgar, and then uh, the Rapid, and then, indeed he had a chess tournament named after the eldest daughter, and a billiard tournament after his youngest daughter, and uh, he did it for many, many years, and then I started playing on their events, so I was uh, just like a fishy or other participant, uh, but after a while, they, yeah, they asked me to start working for them. And it had nothing to do with chess, but it was more running their family office and their business and financial world. So, uh, and in fact, Ilya, who, who organizes the Levito yeah, he Chess visited, League, yes. he, he mentioned that uh, Amber was one of his inspirations to yes. do the Levito Chess League. He came to visit, I think at that time he was visiting Bareyev and Karamnik because they were friends and I, we always met in the press room. And indeed, he told me that it was one of his, that he liked the atmosphere and the, the friendly atmosphere also between the chess grandmasters and that they could play rapid events and uh, they, they also did blindfold of course in Monaco to make it a bit more special but yeah the whole atmosphere it was well organized they were really treated as professional players but it was still a little bit more relaxed than of course candidate matches or something you know or, or back and say which is very professional and of course to, to aim for the highest so he, he liked that idea for him his own tournament so that is beautiful yeah. How do you find the atmosphere here? You, yeah, you are with I so many friends of yours. Yes, it's very nice to see everybody, uh, you know, once a year if they can do it annually. And uh, also, to because now I live in Amsterdam, so for me it's very nearby. And it's one of the best hotels here, so it's beautiful to, to see everybody. And uh, I can combine it. I work in the morning and then in the afternoon I can free my schedule and then uh, I can come here and uh, talk to the guys. Yeah. Brilliant. And how was your period when you worked with uh, when Usturum? Uh, how was that phase of your life? Yeah, that was very interesting. We moved uh, to Monaco in 2003, and I lived there with my whole family, with my wife and my kids. And uh, we have yeah, we worked for uh, over 15 years there. So I, uh, my kids grew up there. They did their, their French baccalaureate there, and I learned a lot about uh, yeah business life. Eh? What are all the investments which you read about in the world? I knew I, I also learned about that. So that's uh, that was very good education uh, from a financial point of view. So uh, I know I know much more than chess nowadays. I'm uh, trying to be a grandmaster in more subjects now. And and what do you do now? I uh, have a wealth advisory firm, so I have my own firm and I advise uh, clients in, in the Netherlands. So uh, uh, many entrepreneurs who sold their business, they come and then I can advise them a little bit how to do, arrange their wealth for the future or for the next generation and stuff like that. Do you think that being a chess player in any way helped you to do this? Like a lot of people say that it's very yes. beneficial, but 
do it's you feel true so? because you have to anticipate the future and, and of course even if wealth there are many things you can invest in and also many things you have to think about in life with tax and estate planning there are many things you there, there are, uh, you have to arrange so uh, I guess it's like uh, playing a simul huh? on multiple boards at the same time so maybe on that occasion but I'm also uh, yeah I also learned a lot in Monaco and also to work with quality advisors of course because uh, you cannot do it all by yourself you need good advisors around you, around the family and around their wealth uh, so I'm trying to arrange that and also so uh, it's uh, it's a modest role but uh, I like it so uh, are you in any way related to chess now? Do, does chess feature in your life? No, no, I just follow from the distance on the online. And uh, like I said, if the big events are there, or if I can say, uh, I'm helping a little bit the chess, Dutch Chess Federation with, you know, if they need something with sponsors or for the, the, for the you know, the, the top events, they, they consult me sometimes about the players or whatever. But it's, it's, it's a very modest role. It's just like uh, I'm available to consult me if they want. But it's just for helping because uh, well I owe a lot to chess in general and uh, I'm happy I'm happy if, if chess develops well and I think modern technology uh, uh, develops chess well in a good way I think more than we expected with the computers and the online events. Uh, but from all the experience you have of the outer world and many spheres, how do you see the sphere of chess growing? Do you find that to be going on the right track? Well, yes, well, I guess Carlsen did a lot eh? as, as a world champion and what he, his team developed around him with Chess24 and now with Chess.com, I guess that, that's quite impressive. Uh, I guess many people can teach online, eh? that is also, because of course always there was a problem also for grandmasters when they're in a later stage of their career how to make money and I think now with online, eh, they have chess balls and they have all the teaching courses and I guess it, it, it opens the world, uh, it gets a more you know, solid foundation for the chess world. There are still challenges compared to other sports maybe, yeah, but I think it's, it, in a way it's more professional and the only thing what you see uh, or what I read is that they want to go more, yeah, the, the quicker games, yes. yeah, they like it better and it sells better of course to the bigger audience and maybe for classical players it's, I can imagine it's not so easy to adapt. But, uh, yeah, it's a new world. Eh? It's good. The world changes and the chess world should also change. It's fine. Th know? That's how people say that where there are viewers, that's where the sponsors want to go and viewers want to see shorter formats. Yes. So that's... I guess you have to find a balance between both of them and traditional tournaments like like and say still do it their way, but the online world also mandates, you know, a different approach and it's, it's only nicer that there, there are more different uh, systems and, 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 and time schedules for people to play and what they can be good at because some people can be better at uh, you know accelerated systems or, or chess is, you know if it makes them happy it's fine by me you know brilliant well Yerun it was a, a great pleasure talking to you uh, I've been you know seeing your games known about your achievements the first time I'm meeting you in person so it was a pleasure thank you for your time and uh, for uh, interviewing me thank you bye bye